I'm willing to. Go ahead, James. <laughs> Come on. If it's people, everybody's afraid here. Um, okay, so again, just to, to remind you all, I'm I'm one of the conveners along with Pete Simonson, Lori Emerson in English, um, uh, Ernesto Acevedo Munoz in film studies, uh, Stuart Hoover, and I come from journalism, mass communication, and Bob Craig from communication. So that's. We're the MC, MC or something. Uh, anyway, um, so <coughs> in terms of the alphabet soup, in a sense, I think it's sort of, for us, it's obvious that communication is an overarching term that incorporates practically any human practice that you can imagine. And so none of us feel uncomfortable with that term in any way. Mass communication comes out of the old um, unit that um, has been undergone transformation. Media studies is is something that's fairly central to the to those of us who study media. Um, information is a is a very debatable kind of term, and so there's a lot of different ways to approach that. And I don't think we've talked a lot about information. And then technology is both a means of communication, but it's also a social practice. So I think that the interesting ideas we've mostly been working with, and we would love to hear your your thoughts about this is that we're looking at everything that we do in one way or another and I'm going to refer to my notes because it will help me be clear is that we're interested in kind of creative and compelling ways in a new entity of some kind to connect practices and studies and by practices we're talking about production and design and writing and image making and speaking and studies or analysis, include analysis, uh, history, theory, criticism, and that, in a sense, in the field I come from, and I think that the other conveners in our group come from, those two things are mutually enriching, they're mutually constitutive, and it's important for us to imagine a new unit in which that would bring those together, not separate them, not cordon them off so that the only these things belong in it, because speaking as someone who studies media, who has been a journalist and who teaches students who want to become practitioners. Um, you can't be a good student of media if you don't understand the practices. And the more deeply you get into the practices, the more, you know, the richer your understanding comes uh, becomes if you also study it and you understand what it is you're doing. So that's really where we're going and we're trying to be as, in, you know, open and inclusive as we can so that even though journalism is not in the name of our group, for example, the study of journalism, the practice of journalism, are clearly things that belong under the umbrella that we're part of. We don't, we don't see it as being entirely separate, so I'll stop here. Who else wants to take a whack? Uh. So traditionally, uh, Journalism programs, journalism departments, journalism schools have uh, been uh, kind of separate from the academy in which they've been placed. Um, you know, for historical reasons, for reasons that we have all these skills that we have to impart to students, uh, and you know that that's a that's a pretty time-consuming thing, etc. Uh, but uh, I guess we've been talking in our group about. Uh, the fact that um, you know journalism and journalists have a lot to offer the academy, the academy has a lot to offer journalism, and in fact, even in this, even just making that statement, I'm still making a distinction between the two. Um, so I come at this, uh, and I'm speaking for myself as a convener, uh, trying res wrestling with all of these things. I, I come at this uh, having been here at the University of Colorado since 1996, and never feeling ever um, this distinction. Uh, because of all of the uh, colleagues that I've had the pleasure of working with in environmental studies, uh, environmental sciences, and also, you know, even in, in astrophysics and God knows what else. And um, my experience, uh, of tr of a transformative experience for me, uh, was uh, something that we did um, uh, starting in the year 2000, funded by the National Science Foundation called Climate. Uh, carbon climate and society and basically what it was is we we uh, had this radical idea well, well we, we, we really don't know exactly how to tackle these issues but why don't we put some really bright students together from the physical sciences the social sciences and journalism together in, in a cohort along with their faculty members and have them wrestle with it 
Uh, and, um, and we have no idea how that's going to come out. We don't even know exactly what we're going to do. But we just said we're going to do it. And for some crazy reason, the National Science Foundation thought that was a good idea and funded us. And um, it was totally transformative for the students who were involved and for the faculty involved. Um, so by way of saying that my experience in academia was not with this separation that has traditionally existed between journalism and the rest of academia. So, you know, my friend Alan Townsend and I have had conversations over beers since that, since we had that grant. How this was called an Eigert grant, and the, and our conversations are always how can we Eigertize the university? How can we take our experience uh, that we had that was transformative, and 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 put that on steroids? Uh, so that's one of the questions that I'm wondering in my discussion group that we're we're talking about. You know, how can we take that? And you know, and maybe make that bigger, blow that up, and that sort of gets at the question I guess that you asked earlier, Michael. So, I can. Um, our topics. So we've had one um, discussion group to which we had one, we had three conveners and one outside participant um, show up yesterday. Um, but the discussion that we've had uh, have focused on. So there's some some aspects of things that obviously impact journalism, like every other media that is going through a phase of disintermediation uh, as music has and as video is doing now and the structure by which people pay for and, and acquire and manage to provide um, whatever that media product is, whether it's music and the demise of record labels and record stores and now the demise of newspapers. There's often a focus on um, using technology to reduce the costs of things and that was one of the points that came up in discussions yesterday is we often think of technology as a cost reduction mechanism or a way to do the same thing in a different, uh, or a, in a basically the same way, but in a cost reduction way. And that's often what we think about when we think about technology because um, it's sort of, we don't have to then begin to think outside of the box. Uh, but that there are opportunities to begin to engage technology in ways that might broaden uh, people's experience. So for example, there's a company called Narrative, silent, uh, narrative Science, which um, out of Northwestern University, which is a collaboration between the Computer Science Department, Journalism, and somebody else. And what they do is they take data, the most uh, uh, um, well-known example is from like high school sports games. They take data over a long period of time and they automatically generate sports articles that then were actually tested, taste tested against uh, human written sports articles and people like the computer generated ones better. Um, um, and the reason they did was because they did things like they didn't bury the lead and they, they got all the contextual <laughs> facts right and things along these lines. Um, and so maybe, you know, there's an example of, of here's an automation where you go like, oh my God, they're going to take my job away writing useless high school sports articles. Um, but you could also be liberated in the sense like, oh God, I don't have to worry about what Boulder High did anymore um, at that point. Or maybe you could even think beyond that and like maybe my my um, Boulder City power bill will come with a story explaining what's going on with my power bill. Uh, there are actually other companies doing that. They're extracting data out of the SEC um, uh, K10 and Q10 forms uh, to try and explain to you what happened in an annual report uh, in an automated human readable fashion as opposed to in a pile of stats um, for that. So there was this notion that rather than focusing on the doing, or the, this is a discussion topic that came up, Rather than doing what we're doing now in the same way, but cheaper, can it be used to do more or interesting things? There was also a notion of, or a discussion around um, the fact that the letters in ICJMT as their growing name um, increases. So there are a number of different I schools or information schools that embody a lot of, of topics that sometimes involve media, sometimes involve communication, have sometimes but rarely involved journalism. Um, and the many of the, the many of the people, the person who showed up, um, <laughs> the, the discussion the, the, and the, some of the conveners were, you know, that an I in the I school has a certain <laughs> sense or meaning associated with it. And then there was a point that was made that um, education is also being transformed and it is a form of media and communication that is being transformed by technology and uh, information, but it's sort of left out, or it's one of the things that's not being in this discussion, which is, how could you transform the, the role of what the university does um, or what education does through technology as well? And it, should that be part of that discussion? 